expectation on the commercial vehicle operation side when it comes to interstate movement of trucks and buses. Uh, we collectively, as an agency across the nation, regulate about 8 million vehicles, large, large trucks. Not uh, We didn't get into the, uh, the vocational definition, although we regulate them too, and it's just as much of a challenge as you heard. Um, but in terms of vehicles, about 8 million. In terms of drivers, again, on the interstate side, large vehicles, about 4 million. And in terms of companies, uh, Randy's number is right on target, about a half a million, 500,000 actively engaged motor carrier companies. So we do that in a framework. We need to work in a framework, and, and from my perspective, we need pretty basic principles in our framework. It's raising the bar to enter the industry. Uh, it's ensuring once you're in the industry that you're maintaining high safety standards to stay there. Um, and it's making sure that you, as employers, that we, as regulators, that our state partners, as enforcement officers, or DMV uh, uh, customer service reps, have the tools to keep the high-risk operators off the road or out of the system. And I say that, and I provide that framework, whether that's a driver, a vehicle, a motor carrier company, a broker, anybody that we have the opportunity to regulate directly. So in the context of any of our rules or programs that we develop, we need to develop them in a way that ties back to those three principles, one or more of them, and invariably they do. Probably the one that is most forefront in the news is CSA, Comprehensive Safety Analysis. There's no better example that I can provide that demonstrates how our agency is shifting and continuing to improve the tools we use and offer industry to make sure everybody maintains a safety standard if you're going to stay in the industry. And our tools for doing that and detecting when that's not happening need to improve over time. Otherwise, we're not doing our job. We need to be more efficient. We need to be more effective. And we need to be more performance-based and hold each other accountable in this process. And CSA absolutely does that. It does it through three core components. The current one, it's the system. It's a system, it's a process, it's a rule. The safety management system is what you've had an opportunity, many carriers have had an opportunity to look at for the past six months, past five months. It's the system that later this month we will switch over to from SafeStat, which has been the traditional system that we as an agency use and our state partners use to prioritize who we're going to look at. The process piece comes down to the interventions that we use. The traditional intervention is the compliance review. Uh, usually a lengthy on-site audit type process. That intervention process has an opportunity to improve and be more focused and enable us as investigators um, and our state partners and company owners uh, as business operators to get ahead of violation trends or operating trends that tend towards unsafe operations before that crash occurs, before that incident occurs. It gives, it, it gives carriers a better, a better way of viewing what's happening with their equipment by their drivers on the roadways. And in the last piece of it, from the rule piece, it's the safety fitness determination rule, which we'll see next year in a proposed state, later in the year, you know, whether it's spring or summer. And that rule is the piece that actually decouples the compliance review from the rating process and will enable us to use more current active performance data to rate carriers and thereby reach a broader spectrum of the regulated half a million that we're talking about. So system process rule, compliance, safety, accountability, again, three principles, three letters, three words, try and keep it simple. Three is working well.